This is Tom Fox. I would like to welcome you to a special five-part podcast series on navigating CFIUS risks with business intelligence, a podcast series sponsored by K2 Intelligence Financial Integrity Network. In this podcast series, I visit with Him Das and David Holly to discuss the risks involved in the Committee on Foreign Investments in the U.S. and how best navigate them. David Holly, a co-lead of the CFIUS Advisory Practice at K2 Financial Intelligence Integrity Network, has more than 25 years of global investigations, business intelligence, corporate governance, and regulatory compliance consulting experience. He draws on decades of private sector experience to provide pragmatic advice that integrates his investigative skill set and financial expertise with cutting-edge technology. M. Das has over 15 years of strategic experience in crafting innovative legal and policy solutions to domestic and global challenges involving critical U.S. economic and national security assets. He assists and supports all aspects of K2 intelligence FIN's work, including risk assessments, training, and the development of and review of new services, products, platforms, and technologies. In this podcast series, we will take a look at an overview of CFIUS, then consider navigating the CFIUS process by proactive engagement and compliance solutions, consider CFIUS sanctions and export control compliance frameworks, CFIUS and cyber risk and access control, and conclude with effective monitoring and compliance officer solutions for CFIUS. This series is one that I know you will enjoy. It is a special production of the Compliance Podcast Network and once again sponsored by the K2 Intelligence Financial Integrity Network. In this episode, Him Das joins me to discuss CFIUS, Sanctions and Export Control Compliance Frameworks. Him, I think uh, sanctions and export controls are one of the things that are in the forefront of most compliance practitioners and business executives' minds these days um, under this current administration. But I wanted to maybe focus on what do you see that CFIUS is examining around sanctions and export control? Um, that's a great question, Tom. Um, I think uh, a key point to uh, stress uh, and to understand is that often sanctions and export controls are grouped together, um, but uh, they're treated a little bit differently in the CFIUS process. And so I'll separate them out uh, and talk about them a little bit um, uh, distinctly. Um, first of all, I'll just start with sanctions. Um, uh, with respect to sanctions, first of all, just to uh, take one step backwards. Um, the U.S. just imposes uh, a broad range of economic sanctions, uh, primarily for foreign policy or national security reasons. Um, there are comprehensive sanctions um, with respect to certain countries, for example, North Korea, and Iran, Cuba, Syria, um, parts of Ukraine, the Crimea region. There are uh, broad targeted sanctions on bad actors, such as terrorists or transnational criminal organizations, uh, persons who are engaged in corruption or human rights violations, um, and regime uh, actors, for example, in Venezuela or Zimbabwe. And then there is a range of sectoral, sectoral sanctions as well on some countries, such as Venezuela or Russia. Um, these uh, sanctions regimes from a, a U.S. government uh, perspective are critical to advancing uh, U.S. national interests and, and global national security interests as well. So CFIUS will often examine whether the investor or the investment partners uh, comply with U.S. sanctions laws um, to the extent that they are applicable and to understand whether or not the foreign investor presents a threat to national security or could use the investment um, in the U.S. business to threaten U.S. national security um, by uh, engaging or being a pass-through to acting uh, in transactions with uh, U.S., I mean, sorry, with uh, uh, sanctioned jurisdictions or sanctioned persons. So, for example, uh, if the foreign investor uh, regularly engages in transactions with Iran and has violated or violates U.S. sanctions or export control laws by dealing with Iran, uh, either through the U.S. Uh, financial system or by exporting U.S. Uh, origin items that don't have a commerce license and are subject to export controls, that's going to present a national security concern. CFIUS is going to look at that very closely um, as to whether or not uh, there is a potential risk um, for uh, the foreign investor to use U.S. technology or US, uh, the U.S. jurisdiction um, for engaging in sanctioned activities. Um, if the foreign uh, investor also, and this is an important point, 
has failed to disclose activities uh, that are subject to sanctions or does not have a, a culture of compliance around uh, sanctions-related uh, issues, and they've engaged in some of those sanctions, um, it's potential that those issues could raise uh, questions of trust. Um, and reliability around the willingness and the ability of the foreign investor to implement and abide by a mitigation agreement. Um, ultimately, um, you know, uh, 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 oversight um, and enforcement only goes so far, and ultimately the U.S. government agencies are going to rely a little bit on the trust um, of the partnership with the parties to the transaction. And so uh, the question of trust is a very important one in terms of uh, obtaining CFIUS clearance for a transaction. So from a due diligence perspective, it's very important to understand, again, who your foreign investors are, who they engage with, um, and whether or not they've engaged with sanctioned jurisdictions. Um, and that's an, uh, an important point. Um, stepping over to export controls, I, I think that the new rules and regulations um, in the enactment of FIRMA uh, uh, place uh, export controls uh, with an even greater focus um, under these regulations. Um, it's incredibly important to understand uh, the technology um, that, uh, that uh, the U.S. target business has um, and that it is manufacturing, designing, and using to be able to understand whether uh, uh, the technology that you're using is going to be subject to export controls. Um, and items that are subject to export controls are either items that have dual-use purposes um, that is, those that have both military and commercial uses uh, that are regulated and controlled for export by the Department of Commerce. And these can be avionics, like semiconductors, robotics, biotechnology, nanotechnology, missile-related items, a full range of uh, uh, items um, that uh, may be uh, obvious in many circumstances, but often are not uh, obvious either to the foreign investor or to uh, the target U.S. business as well. So it's important to do some due diligence around that. Um, other export-controlled items are ones that are squarely uh, uh, used by the military, um, you know, missile guidance technologies and the like um, that are regulated by the State Department. Um, if a, 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 an item or a technology is subject to export controls, um, CFIUS is going to place greater scrutiny um, on uh, the transaction um, and it's important for the parties to the transaction to, to provide greater focus as well because the new rules and regulations add not only substantive evaluation of the national security uh, considerations, but also there is a procedural element uh, that is imposed uh, for certain types of technologies that are subject to export controls as well. Um, with respect to the procedural elements, um, if, uh, if uh, a U.S. business um, as uh, uh, involved in certain cr critical technologies, for example, if they produce or design, test, manufacture, or fabricate uh, critical technologies or ones that are subject to uh, export controls, uh, it's important to evaluate whether or not um, a mandatory declaration is required because if they are involved in certain types of critical technologies, um, uh, the parties to the transaction will have to file a uh, a mandatory declaration with CFIUS, and it will be required. If you fail to file that mandatory declaration, uh, the parties to the transaction could be subject to significant penalties. Um, also, if uh, it's a entity that is engaged in crit critical technologies and there's a substantial foreign government interest in the transaction, um, um, it's inc it, it may also be subject to the mandatory declaration requirement. Um, secondly, if export control technologies are involved, you can uh, expect CFIUS to very closely evaluate the investment uh, to just understand the national security threats and vulnerabilities a little bit more closely. Um, these are some of the issues that Dave uh, discussed in an earlier podcast as well, what the foreign government involvement will be, whether there's a concerted foreign government effort to acquire sensitive technologies, whether or not there's uh, potential adverse impacts to the U.S. supply chain, or to an overall threat in terms of uh, U.S. leadership with respect to certain technologies. And what uh, particular sectors might be vulnerable to the new export control rules and why? Um, well, uh, this is a key point, and thanks for asking this, uh, Tom. Um, you know, the new regulations that were issued on February 13th actually uh, identify 
uh, a number of the key technologies and uh, industrial sectors um, that might be subject to the new rules. Um, uh, these are common uh, uh, sensitive sectors, and they include aircraft and aircraft parts, nanotechnology, biotechnology, semiconductors uh, are an important focus for uh, CFIUS uh, consideration, batteries, aluminum manufacturing, uh, turbine generation, uh, cell phone technologies, and the petroleum sector. Um, uh, it would be, you know, we would need to examine uh, each of the factors that are laid out in the CFIUS regulations and the list of technologies, but they are in the CFIUS rules. Um, I think an important point to add is that in addition to the CFIUS rules, um, when Congress passed FIRMA in 2018, it also passed a law called the Export Control Reform Act, and it requires the U.S. government to identify uh, emerging and foundational technologies that will be subject to export controls as well as CFIUS review. Um, the, the U.S. government and the Commerce Department particularly are still considering uh, what those technologies are. Uh, but once they are announced, um, uh, there will be very significant uh, CFIUS interest in those uh, technologies and in terms of whether or not to clear, evaluate, and mitigate a transaction. Uh, these are going to be new and innovative technologies, potentially ones that are not currently subject to export controls, and they're going to be technologies uh, that provide the U.S. with technological leadership. I think uh, Commerce has identified some of the potential areas, and again, these are areas like biotechnology, uh, artificial intelli intelligence, mach uh, machine uh, learning, robotics, an area where we could expect more export controls to be announced in the future. So how can entities which are directly under these prescriptions leverage due diligence to perhaps mitigate these issues? Um, well, I think there are four key issues. Um, one is you just need to understand your technologies, what you ma manufacture and what you use. Um, export control technologies can be embedded in items that are not export controls. For example, you know, an aircraft engine could have certain uh, uh, internal uh, technologies that might be subject to export controls, uh, even though the overall, uh, uh, overall engine itself might not be subject to export controls. Aircraft, for example, um, may be subject to export controls um, because they include components themselves that uh, meet certain de minimis thresholds um, that uh, make the entire aircraft uh, subject to uh, export controls. And so it's important to understand the full uh, spectrum of the technology and to conduct due, due diligence with respect to all the technology that's incorporated or that's manufactured or used by a company. Um, Second of all, it's important to understand your investor and their interest in your company and its technologies. Uh, uh, you know, you should ev evaluate whether or not there might be a national security threat, uh, vulnerability, or some sanctions exposure as well. Um, and, you know, you should understand whether or not your investor uh, uh, and what it's invested in from a historical perspective or what's in their portfolio to get a better, better understanding of whether or not they have strategic objectives with respect to a technology or range of technologies or a particular sector that might have some impact or implications with U.S. Techno technological leadership more generally or with respect to U.S. Uh, leadership with respect to military defense-related items or the like. Um, I think it's also important for organizations to consider appropriate mitigation, um, either by shaping your transaction in a way that might uh, prevent access by a foreign investor to material non-public information, um, by imposing uh, appropriate access controls, or by uh, placing units uh, that are uh, engaged in sensitive technologies in appropriate proxy arrangements or carving them out of, uh, of a transaction if they uh, raise particular national security concerns as well. So mitigation uh, is an important element as well. And last, uh, but certainly not least, uh, it's just important to undertake uh, appropriate uh, compliance through a monitoring regime or a security officer. Um, those types of regimes are going to put in place the right uh, framework uh, that will help build trust with CFIUS and, and demonstrate to CFIUS that you're thinking about uh, uh, the compliance framework in the future as well. So those are four key things for uh, uh, entities to think about in terms of due diligence and compliance.
Kim, unfortunately, once again, we are near the end of our time, but I hope our listeners will join us tomorrow where we take a look at CFIUS, cyber risk, and access control. Kim, I look forward to continuing the conversation. Great. Thank you for having me.